It's a video on St. John talking about the fact that he didn't really get paid that much for his song with Usher. But I think there's some important points that I don't see people talking about enough. Check it out. Song came out. At the time, the song streamed 70 million. That's a lot. That's not 70 million dollars. And here's the That's a song that he did with Usher. That's what he's referring to. And it did 70 million streams. Mathematics. 70 million streams. I own 25% of the songs. And it's $3,000 per million stream. It's 3,000 times 70. So $210,000, right? It's math. And the numbers got to make sense. I'm waiting on a song for two years. Based on the royalty rate that Spotify pays the publishers, there's two types of money in records. It's publishing money. That's writing. And then it's performance money. It wasn't my I voice. So I'm just on the publishing side. So that $210,000 that that song made had to be bust down. My take on that 210 was 1500 Dollars. And I, if I'd have put that song out myself and only had 3 million streams, I'd have made 10,000. I said, I'm done. I washed my hands. I was like, this is dumb. You know how hard it is to get these songs on these people who put it out on their own time? The artists who have their own vision for it? For your livelihood to be dependent on somebody else that you don't control or influence, impact or have a relationship with, yeah. and then it's not even your worth, you're not even getting paid your weight in salt. I wrote a record for us. Whew. That thing was moving because he talking and he hit so many points that people aren't addressing. Like people keep going back to the $1,500 for 70 million streams. We know that. We know that. Look, the stream rate, it ain't that much. Yeah. Right. Especially when you look at the percentage of the percentage. So one, I do love that he smartly was like, look, man, I could get less streams and make more money. That's the basic indie concept. Indie art has been telling y'all that for forever, man. Like I could not be signed, but get a higher percentage and, and do quote unquote worse but make more money yeah right that's something that i i feel like people understand for the most part right now still i think the generalized thinking of i wrote a hit with usher even though 70 million isn't like a usher usher hit you know what i mean but saying i wrote a song that did well with usher yeah i only made fifteen hundred dollars out off of it that's mind blowing for I know like a lot of consumers and just people in general. Yeah. Right. Because we're not even talking about, oh, it was a work for hire. He actually was participating <laughs> in the back end, right? True credits, et cetera. And he still didn't get paid that much. But when you look at two years, I got $1,500 after two years. Golly. Yeah. You know what I mean? And, now this is this how you know this, you could always tell like the artists that are like just older, right? It's just like I can't live off of that shit. Yeah, bro. What seven fifty a year? What what am I seven fifty a year? Right, exactly. Like, you, you just bust that down into an hourly raise. That's probably like worse than being a waiter who didn't get tips. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. yeah. So I mean, he even made that point, right? Like he's like, I would much rather just like take the bet on take the bet on myself. Um and, and and make less there. So I mean, it, it, I don't know, man. That's why it, this is always such like a like a thin line for me because like the 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 splits conversation and just how micro those breakdowns can get. Just, Twenty dollars a month. That's what that came down to. That's crazy. Oh, you just did the math on it. Yeah, you can find that shit on the ground. Bro. <laughs> <laughs> you can find that shit on the ground. <laughs> but but it's, it's just because it's, I I feel like it's safe to say he's probably locked in some like crazy pub situation you know what i'm saying for it to come down like that that's one of the, but that's why i go back to you know, i don't know you know what i'm saying i don't know i'm gonna throw it out there hey but, but 10k isn't that much either right you're like oh, yeah. i could do 10 mil or 3 mil and get 10k we know that's not all that much either which is something that artists are struggling with but to me the biggest thing out of all this is what the writers are dealing with remember i talk about me not necessarily wanting to manage artists early in my career because i'm like i can't depend my whole life success off this in individual right yeah him from a writer standpoint in this time he's not even talking about individual that he's personally dealing with it's one thing where i'm like bro yo jacory you the artist and bro i gotta like wake you up you're not inspired enough and i have to deal with all this and it's like bro you being lazy but at least i feel like i got direct line of communication and i and i feel like i might be able to influence you a bit right yeah but you're talking about as a songwriter just throwing your music out into the ether and sometimes sometimes and just hoping that it gets picked up you pitch it to somebody 
And then, like he said, the artist has their own vision. So they might like the song, but then it might not be in this project because it doesn't fit this project. So they have to wait, just like any artist does, right? With their yeah. own music. Oh, if it's here, better than there. So he's talking about after two years getting 1500 I don't know if that's after it came out or whatever, but let's just pretend, which has happened in many songs, it took like five years for the song to come out, right? Or whether, even worse, you wrote the shit for Dr. Dre and it never came out. <laughs> <laughs> we know how shit go with him, right? So it might be like five years before you start to see that money. You add in like the amount of time to get them to accept it. You don't know if they're going to accept it at all because you don't have much influence over the situation in many of these situations. So it might take a certain amount of time to get accepted if it does get accepted, which is you know a probability to work with there then you have the amount of time for it to come out then hopefully it performs well right because that's not guaranteed we know how hard that shit is even the biggest artists have songs that don't do well yeah and then we know how slow music payouts come and how sometimes music payouts don't come in the way they should and, and somebody might end up having to like audit and do all these other things for fifteen hundred dollars over an extended period of time he said too it could have been longer so a lot of this in terms of artistry speaks to why especially in today where the opportunity so much there is there bro control as much as you can yeah like just point blank control as much as you can because it's already hard enough to win in this and the further away from the control that you get you're dealing with not only increased probability of failure but you're also dealing with lower percentages if you succeed so the risk factor is high as hell let me take a quick second to say if you're an artist trying to blow your music up or if you're a manager a music professional in general trying to help an artist blow their music up i have something that's a game changer for you and it's completely free as you may know, we've helped multiple artists go from zero to hundreds of thousands of streams. We've helped multiple artists go from hundreds of thousands to millions of streams, chart on Billboard, go viral, all of that stuff. And we've now made the way we've branded multiple artists and helped them go viral completely free, step by step in Brandman Network. All you have to do is check out brandmannetwork.com. You apply. It's completely free. But the thing is, we're not going to let everybody in forever. So the faster you apply, the better your chance of getting accepted. Brandmannetwork.com. Check it out. Back to the video. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, mean, I, I do see it from, from his side, too, where it's like, you know, it's much easier to get 3 million streams than 70 million. You know what I'm saying? Like, like right. 3 million is not a, not a crazy goal to hit, especially for like an artist of, of his caliber, but I, I would devil's advocate a little bit and say, of course, of course. Go like, and, and this goes back to I, I would love to know like what his situation was like then, but I would imagine that that, like having the credits of that song probably opened hella doors for him, right? Yeah, some that maybe wouldn't have happened if he had put it out under his his own umbrella, and I think just like because because what I don't want. Every artist to hear this and say is like, oh, this is why I never was song right. I'm never giving my shit away. Because mm -hmm. I know a lot of artists that feel exactly like this. Like, one, yeah. I don't want to give someone a hit that I feel like could have been for me. You know what I'm saying? Now I'm a little salty about it. <laughs> or two, like you just said, like, nah, like, this is my baby. This is getting too far away from my hands and my control. You know what yep. I'm saying? Those are the, the two main reasons I hear artists say I don't want to do it. But then I think about, like, all of the prolific artists who started out as like songwriters you know what i'm saying and were willing to give away that shit and probably go through similar situations like this because of the doors that open just for me to say like hey man i got a usher song it got 70 million right well i got a, a whoever a beyonce some walk or whatever song yeah um and then you know what i'm saying that but but now that i've kind of built that call for these situations now i'm taking the rest of my shit and hoarding and doing what he said you know what i'm saying like so i do think like the other thing I do kind of wish um, he would have brought a little clarity on like what part of his career, what point in his career was this? You know what I'm saying? Because I don't know. Like, did he write? Do you know if he wrote that song for Usher before? Like, he started popping as a solo artist, or if it was like in the in the midst of it, or I think it was before he was starting popping, and that was kind of why he made a point. I could try to look up what song um, it might have been that he's referring to specifically. Yeah, but uh, who else did he write for? I remember 
we were we were working with some people and they were like St. John used to write for I feel like hella people. Oh yeah. So the song uh he wrote Kaiser, he worked with her. Which is like he had all these random credits that okay. people didn't know him for. Yeah. Right. And you would never expect the artist. He might have had some on Hideaway. I know a lot of people might not even know that song or whatever. But like he St. John had some credits, like for real, for real. Yeah, like, like he out here. Yeah, with with different types of artists. No, what it's not on Hideaway, but it is with that artist. So I think the happiest medium that I can think of, and of course everybody do their own thing, like whatever makes sense to you. But like me, I would probably strategically strategically, if I was an artist, compartmentalize it. Like, am I writing a song for Usher? If I was in a position, right, if, and I had somebody connected where I could truly say, hey, I'm trying to write one and pitch it for Usher, Rihanna, whoever, whoever. So I'm not writing this for me anyway. You get what I'm saying? Because yeah. I know some writers who actually do that, right? They're writing in somebody else's voice, but then their music is a their own voice and it's their own experience, right? Yeah, yeah. So, like, that probably might help some of the dissension between like, oh man, I could have just kept this for myself, yada, yada, yada. Beyond that, yeah, I think it's a fact that yes, there have been people who have been songwriters who have transitioned to artists. However, there is a grave like, yard of songwriters <laughs> who, you know, never made it to that artist side. However, <laughs> there's also a graveyard of rich songwriters who never became artists. Exactly. So, <laughs> exactly. You know what I mean? It's not the it's not the worst fail if you are a successful songwriter mm -hmm. who just doesn't happen to find your your wings as an artist. Yeah, man, I'm checking that up, man. Twenty you said that was twenty dollars a day, man. You get about thirty of them. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> I don't think that's the number we want to work off of. You know what I mean? Yeah. We're talking about twenty dollars a month, by the way. Yeah, I know. I'm saying yeah. like you get, you get about. You know what I'm saying? Maybe about 300, 300 of them. You know what I'm saying? Like 300, <laughs> I'm not 30. Yeah, like 300 of them, man, you know? Okay. You collect them over the years like, like you know, like a like a Quincy Jones seeking Infinity Stones. You know what I'm saying? Like just be out here collecting songwriting credits. Quincy, <laughs> Quincy a different animal right there. That's a different animal. That's why you have some of those, uh, people be saying that kind of stuff like about Puffy and old, old school type yeah. of shit. We're like, man, he didn't even do nothing. All he did was you know, push the button, one button, and, and or say turn it louder. And now he on the credits. You know, I don't have no stake in that horse. I don't get <laughs> what, what officially qualifies as production or not. I and mean, I wasn't there, but that. But even if it was that, I cannot understand. Right, the incentive to do that. Let me get my yeah. hands on as many of these Bucking, things as bro. possible. That shit might be perfect, but now nah, I'm gonna just <laughs> throw in some feedback that's unneeded. But I'm gonna put myself on the credits. Cause I'm just trying to make all this add up. One ain't enough. That's what I'm saying, bro. Get all them <laughs> residual checks, bro. Two percent of everything, bro. You know that two percent started stacking up. <laughs> hey, that's a fact, bro. All I need is fifty-two percent, so I'm about a hundred. <laughs> <laughs> all right, next.